When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. This is the Investors Unite podcast, a look at government overreach and secrecy and its impact on American taxpayers, public policy, and law. For years, the federal government has tried to hide its misuse of authority with regard to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The Investors Unite podcast helps you untangle the facts. The latest installment begins now. Today, veteran housing policy expert Alex Pollack of the R Street Institute offers some thoughts about GSC reform legislation currently before Congress. He will also discuss his proposal to rebuild and maintain the enterprise's capital reserves along the lines of requirements for systemically important financial institutions, or SIFIs. This is Alex Pollack uh, of the R Street Institute. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to make a few comments about the uh, current situation with the reform of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that everybody knows we have needed uh, for uh, about 10 years or so, but we we can't seem to get done. Uh, Nonetheless, history goes on. Things keep changing. And uh, it's interesting to think about uh, where we are uh, just now. Uh, Among other things, we have a bill in the House of Representatives called the Jumpstart Reauthorization. Uh, And let me start with just a comment on that. A key part of this uh, uh, bill would have the Congress uh, saying to the director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, who is the conservator of Fannie and Freddie, which really means he's the same as the CEO uh, of Fannie and Freddie. And and what it says is, if you withhold any of the dividend, which is due to the Treasury, you cannot fund the Affordable Housing uh, Trust Fund. Uh, I could say this in a little colloquial way, uh, which is this is the Congress firing a a warning shot uh, across the bow uh, of the regulatory agency saying, we are in charge of this and we want to be in charge of it. And just to show you uh, that we're serious, uh, we intend to pass a law which says if you don't pay all of the all of the dividend to the Treasury from Fannie and Freddie, which is essentially all of their profits, then you won't be able to give any money uh, to your friends uh, in the affordable housing uh, sector. Uh, and so don't do anything. Uh, Congress wants to do this itself. It seems to me that's the right way to uh, to interpret this uh, bill. And uh, if I were the director uh, over at the FHFA, I would take it exactly that way, and I would say, "Aha! I see that uh, the elected representatives of the people want to take care of this." And I suspect, uh, if it were me, I would conclude uh, to go along with that idea that this is really an issue for Congress, and I shouldn't be trying to do things without their authorization. Uh, Of course, the director, Mr. Watt, has said many times uh, in testimony and in speeches correctly that this is a matter for for the Congress, even though the Congress hasn't done anything yet. Well, now, one of the things uh, which could be done, however, without the Congress, could be done by a regulatory act of the um, Financial Stability Oversight Board, known affectionately to many of us as FSOC, F-S-O-C, is that Fannie and Freddie could be formally designated uh, as systemically important financial institutions. Now, that means uh, we call that a SIFI, and a systemically important financial institution, or SIFI, means something that's big enough and interconnected enough with the rest of the system such that if it 
gets in trouble or it makes big mistakes, it could cause very widespread problems and instability in the financial system uh, as a whole. And all really big banks are automatically SIFIs under the law. But then FSOC has the ability uh, to designate others as SIFIs. And two things happen if you get designated a SIFI. One is you have a, a significant capital requirement, which is 5% equity compared to your total assets. And that applies to all SIFIs across the board. And the other is you are uh, then regulated by the Federal Reserve relative to your systemic risk. Uh, and in my opinion, both of these things would be excellent uh, to happen to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They need uh, one of the reasons they went broke was they had absurdly low capital requirements, that is to say absurdly high uh, debt compared to their equity, absurdly high leverage, as we say. And so when you have absurdly high leverage, and you have a, a uh, problems of bad loans and bad assets, you are very rapidly insolvent and broke. That's exactly what happened to Fannie and Freddie. Furthermore, it's obvious that with the combined assets of $5 trillion, which is, needless to say, gigantic, and touching all parts of the immense housing finance market, and I should say that mortgage loans are the largest American mortgage loans are the largest loan market in the world with over $10 trillion uh, of outstanding uh, credit. So Fannie and Freddie being dominant players in this gigantic market are without any question and with uh, absolute um, uh, obviousness, they are systemically important and they ought to be uh, designated as SIFIs and have the corresponding uh, capital uh, and oversight, uh, just like J.P. Morgan, say, or Citibank uh, do, and Fannie Mae is bigger than J.P. Morgan, and Freddie Mac is bigger than Citibank, so they're in the right ballpark there. And if you did this, you'd be making a major improvement in the housing finance system. Now, something else is happening right now, which is, I think, very interesting, uh, which I call the 10% moment. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go back uh, to 2008, you'll remember that Fannie and Freddie, having become insolvent, having gone broke, were bailed out uh, by the taxpayers, by the U.S. Treasury. I really, to be specific, it's their creditors who were bailed out because when it looked like the holders of the debt or the mortgage-backed securities of Fannie and Freddie were going to take losses. There was a global cry of anguish. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, we bought this assuming the government would bail us out. Well, you can't possibly ask us to take losses. It's pretty funny, actually, that people behave that way and assume they should be bailed out, but they did, and they were. And so the U.S. Treasury ended up buying uh, $189 billion of, of capital in the form of a senior preferred stock uh, in both uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, the deal for this, um, for this purchase was that that senior preferred stock would have a 10% dividend, so 10% a year, uh, paid to the Treasury, it would, uh, along with that, uh, the Fannie and Freddie would grant and did grant to the Treasury warrants to buy 79.9% of the common stock of each of Fannie and Freddie, for, basically for free, for one one thousandth of a cent per share, per share. And in exchange for that, the Treasury would effectively guarantee all of the debt of Fannie and Freddie and all of those global investors uh, who were so upset at the idea they might lose money would be protected, and all of the investors in Fannie and Freddie, domestic and foreign, all got every penny on time with no problems. Now, on the other side of this deal, how has the Treasury done 
on its investment on its investment well as many people know in 2012 the government changed the deal you know one of the problems with dealing with governments which are sovereign is they are liable to change deals on you and uh, you might not like it they changed the deal to make the 10% dividend into basically all of the profit of Fannie and Freddie. And so Fannie and Freddie have been paying since 2013 to now all of their profit. So the question I want to pose is, if you consider all that money, uh, was that as good a deal for the Treasury as the 10% dividend? Or alternately stated, if you look at all of the cash, and people often talk about, well, look at all the cash, uh, Fannie and Freddie have sent to the government, and they have sent a lot. But is that amount of cash as good as a 10% dividend plus paying off the principal? And the, the way we test that is we find out when the internal rate of return, a standard financial calculation, when the internal rate of return to the Treasury reaches 10%, then that means that that uh, the Treasury has gotten a 10% yield plus all its capital back, and that is what I call the 10% moment, the moment at which that happens. Now, it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen uh, in about uh, uh, a week, a uh, little less than two weeks, because when Fannie Mae, if, if and when Fannie Mae pays its dividend, uh, to the Treasury on December 31st, the internal rate of return for Fannie Mae will cross over 10%, and Freddie Mac has already crossed over 10%. So this means that the, uh, the 10% moment is arriving on New Year's. That means Fannie and Freddie will have paid off an amount of money equivalent to paying 10% plus all the principal back. And uh, if the Treasury would then exercise its warrant, and take over 79.9% of the common shares, that means the original deal would, economically speaking, have been completely paid off. And, and in my opinion, that moment creates the chance uh, to rethink uh, what should be done about Fannie and Freddie. Uh, now, legally, it, it doesn't change the legal situation because, because legally the government unilaterally altered the deal. Uh, but if you think back to the original bailout deal, on, on New Year's Day, it will uh, have all been paid in full if the Treasury exercises its warrants. So uh, then you ought to be able to say, well, couldn't we now relook at this and restructure it going forward? And, and I think we can. I think the uh, there are um, that into this situation of reform uh, goes an essential item, and that is that Fannie and Freddie need to be designated as SIFIs, systemically important financial institutions, because that will give them the capital requirements and the systemic oversight they need and the, uh, the financial system needs. The second item, and there are only two of reform, is uh, even at that point uh, when the deal is economically all paid off, Fannie and Freddie's capital will still be zero. And they will be still completely dependent on the de facto or effective guarantee of their debt by the Treasury. And that guarantee they ought to pay for. That's only fair to the taxpayers. And it's much, and a, a government guarantee that you pay a fair price for is much less distortive than a free government guarantee, which is maximally distortive to the outcome of a market. So uh, Fannie and Freddie should pay a fair price to the government for the effective guarantee they get. And um, the way I would go about setting that price is say it should be equal to what Fannie and Freddie would pay if they were banks to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to have their liabilities guaranteed by the government. We call that deposit insurance. Congress ought to put that question to the FDIC and make them say, 
if, if, if something with exactly the same financial structure, exactly the same risk profile, had to get deposit insurance, this is how much they'd have to pay for it, and that's how much they should have to pay. With those two reforms, uh, SIFI status and, and paying the fair price for the guarantee, then since we, pa we, we will have passed the 10% moment, I believe the right thing to do would be to start the accumulation of retained earnings by Fannie and Freddie as they build up their retained earnings toward their new SIFI capital requirement. Uh, and as they build those earnings, by the way, the fair price for their guarantee will fall. And if I were Secretary that of the Treasury, uh, or if I were anything else, including being a senior fellow of R Street Institute, uh, what I would recommend is this is Fannie and Freddie reform. Uh, declare the original deal uh, has been paid in full. Exercise my warrants as the Treasury Department to own 79.9% of the common because that's part of the original deal. Designate Fannie and Freddie as SIFIs. Set a fair price uh, for the uh, uh, for the de facto government guarantee, which will be there forever. And then say and now. Go out and compete, and if you can, with those uh, structures which make you look like a normal uh, SIFI, uh, and if you can succeed, more power to you. Uh, accumulate capital, uh, go to it. And of course, you'll either sink or swim, uh, depending on, on how you do in the competitive market. Uh, I hope those thoughts are interesting to you, and I'd certainly uh, uh, be pleased uh, to hear from anybody by uh, email. If you have thoughts, uh, my email is apollock at rstreet.org. And thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Details and terms and conditions. Details and terms and conditions.